Welcome to the Matsura One Machine, One Process in-booth demonstration. I appreciate uh, everyone's attention. I'd like to introduce a few people who are, will be involved and available for questions. Our uh, partner in Minneapolis, Custom Mold and Design, uh, Lester Jones, the Vice President and Chief Operating Officer, uh, is here. Uh, he's using the machine in his shop every day, uh, so good real-world uh, experience. Uh, how, you can ask questions how uh, they're implementing the technology and the benefits they're achieving. Uh, also like to introduce our applications team with us this week, uh, Josh Schust and Nick Mitchell, uh, two application engineers. Raise your hand a little higher. There you go. Um, any technical questions you might have, uh, something that I say uh, that you want to get uh, some further detail, feel free to ask them uh, throughout the day. Uh, again, appreciate the opportunity uh, to present our technology. Um, a little bit about Matsura. Matsura uh, started building uh, CNC machining centers in 1934. We're a third generation uh, family owned Japanese company headquartered in Fukui City, uh, Japan. Um, the fourth Matsura uh, generation just joined the company uh, last September. Um, so we have that uh, strong family continuance going. Uh, in the early 70s, they launched, uh, or we uh, launched. Uh, five-axis CNC machining, and to this day are uh, one of the world leaders in highly accurate five-axis machining centers. Um, to build on that technology and to uh, embrace the innovation uh, side of Matsura, um, in 1999, uh, we started developing a powder bed fusion CNC machining center um, additive hybrid machine. Um, as is common in J Japan, the development uh, and initial launch was uh, handled through them. Uh, and then in August of 2017, Matsura Machinery USA uh, built a uh, showroom, a demonstration center, uh, and started uh, selling and marketing um, the Lumex series of hybrid additive manufacturing uh, systems. 100% focused on the injection mold industry today. Uh, we feel the one machine, one process concept is uh, certainly a benefit and uh, can demonstrate a, a significant return on investment uh, to very high-end injection mold making technology uh, companies. A little bit about the process. It's a Sinter powder bed fusion based system with a 45,000 RPM uh, Maxia spindle, uh, Matsura's own proprietary spindle technology. Um, we grow the part or laser center uh, uh, 10 layers at a time is our standard process, so 20 thousandths of thickness, and then we go in and machine that um, uh, centered material back to finish machine-like tolerances and machine-like surface finishes. All of the parts you see uh, in our uh, display cases are as produced on our machine uh, and as they've come out of the machine uh, directly without, without any post-processing. On the laser sintering side, our process parameters are designed and developed to achieve full material properties without a hipping or without a, a heat, heat treatment process. Uh, as sintered, they come out at 36 Rockwell. Uh, it can be heat aged, uh, uh, 485C for three hours, uh, to a 53 Rockwell uh, hardness. Uh, perfect application, again, in the injection mold industry. Uh, materials available are uh, a Miraging M300, which is a European tool standard, a low carbon, um, high chromium content uh, steel. Uh, we also have 316 and 17.4 stainless commercially available, as well as cobalt chrome, Inconel, and aluminum. Um, the aluminum and uh, uh, aluminum is a reactive powder, so it takes a, 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 a option on the machine. Uh, all other, the tool steels run in our standard machining center. Uh, we have a integrated Lumex CAM software, uh, which is uh, constantly being improved and updated um, by Matsura. We have a team of software developers in Japan uh, releasing uh, every six months a new version of the software. Uh, most of the efforts have been around um, improving the machining and reducing the machining time. Uh, our cycle time uh, is about one-third sintering and about two-thirds machining. So because we're a machine tool company, that's where our focus has been and where we continue to make improvements. That's, that's the machine and the technology. Now some of the applications. Um, 
Certainly the biggest hype application is conf the application of conformal cooling uh, to uh, improve park quality, uh, to reduce cycle time, uh, and a, a certainly a big return on investment. Uh, there's a white paper uh, that's available to, to pick up, uh, created by Custom Mold uh, on a particular application, really detailing the possible return on investment uh, in um, implementing conformal cooling. Um, as you'll see some of these uh, parts on the table, uh, here's a plastic version of the conformal cooling in a die cast insert. Uh, this allows the customer to heat and cool the mold rapidly to prevent the problems with heat shock. Uh, they used to use about 20 of these inserts every year and now they use two uh, per year. So the life, life cycle of the part has increased significantly. Um, again, because we're machining as we grow the part, we can get a uh, very fine detail uh, without uh, EDM. In a lot of cases, we can virtually eliminate uh, the use of EDM uh, for deep ribs and deep pockets. Um, the other very exciting um, technology is uh, because it's a dense part, um, we can control the density of the material uh, by laser parameters. Um, so we, in this case, have built a porous vent on top of this drill point. Um, in a, uh, application, um, here's the finished part. You can see that the um, pit ping pong ball will spin, um, so that acting as a vent. Um, probably the biggest demonstration of this. You can see the air coming through the porous vent. Um, imagine the implications for a silicone injection mold where you can shut off the parting line and still let the material or still let the material vent uh, right through the porous structure. Um, if I turn the air off, uh, this liquid won't leak through the vent. So um, keeping them clean and uh, the longevity, longevity of the vents uh, we're finding is, is very beneficial uh, compared to other technologies that's pos that are possible. Lester, uh, any practical application comments that you want to make? Uh, we've been working with uh, Matt Sura on the Lumex process for about eight to ten months, something like that. So we've uh, been learning a lot. Uh, we really appreciate the partnership that we have with them as we work to develop the process and train our people. We've spent a lot of time with their application engineers in our facility, which has been uh, very beneficial, and producing uh, actual cores and cavities. The white paper that Tom talked about, uh, we've got examples floating around here. Uh, we put together a battery case, it was an existing tool, and most of the applications that we've had, um, when we build a new mold, we don't have the opportunity typically to build it in a conventional manner and build it with the additive process. So we're taking existing tools that were built conventionally, building new components through the additive process to demonstrate the benefits of conformal cooling. In this particular study, we're able to take a part that had an 18-second cooling time uh, and reduce that down to 10 seconds. So we took 8 seconds out of the cooling time cycle and actually improved the warp uh, condition in the part, so we actually ended up making a better part uh, and saved eight seconds for every cycle. And through our calculations with the cost st structures that we have in place, in about 80, 85,000 pieces, we'd have that new core paid for. So it demonstrates the opportunity to really save some money and make those parts a lot more economical. I think we, we look at our business as trying to help our customers, the molders that use the tools that we build. Uh, to provide the best quality tool that will make the best quality parts and the most efficient processes. So the conformal cooling applications really allow us to get at both those things, be able to attack the uh, warp and sink areas, those kinds of things. A lot of medical components will end up, uh, an inhaler as an example may have some passageways that have some really bad uh, plastic conditions uh, where the wall sections are thicker than one would like to be able to cool that and reduce the warp and sink that might occur in that kind of a part and at the same time reduce the cycle time really brings benefits uh, to the end user uh, by reducing those costs. Thank you. Uh, I guess if you could come up with or leave with one uh, idea or one thought process of uh, implementing hybrid additive, uh, the one machine, one process, uh, we believe the uh, Lumex series 
uh, addresses three major problems or major issues facing mold makers today. Uh, number one, trying to find a skilled labor force. Um, this machine uses a different set of skills um, that are more readily available, I would say, than a, a seasoned journeyman mold maker. Uh, we're having a very difficult time um, finding mold makers, especially in the Midwest. I know our president uh, on the machining center side says we could sell many more mach five axis machine centers if we could supply a machinist with them. Um, so this technology, one machine, one process, allows um, that, uh, that issue to be addressed. It also addresses some uh, efficiency issues. It's meant to run 24-7, uh, lights out, um, and provide uh, progress as you're sleeping. Uh, again, another uh, significant advantage. Uh, and then lastly, um, it makes us more efficient and more competitive uh, for our customers or for the mold maker customers on the molding side, as Lester mentioned with the conformal cooling and the application of uh, unique technologies um, that are not available in any other, uh, any other platform.